kind of rotating through the slides as we go through tonight, sharing information. Um, a couple things to note before we get started. We're going to be sharing with you general information about the TK program. You're also going to have, once you start TK, a back to school night where you can ask some really specific questions that pertain to your child's classroom or your child's school site. So um, we'll do the best we can to answer all of the questions in the chat as we go along. And um, we'll go ahead and, and get started. So our program, just to give you um, a little bit of foundation as to what it looks like, um, we really emphasize the use of play in our TK classrooms. When you think of play, sometimes we think of play um, as free-flowing play where kids are playing outside or in their bedroom is playing. Play. And while that is a, um, a part of play, we also um, have play embedded within the classroom for academic learning purposes. And as you can see in this quote, that um, the way that children learn at this age is through experiencing things hand on, hands on, through using play to um, work on their interactions with others, to experiment with learning materials manipulatives and to really explore and take risks and these have been shown to be very beneficial to children's development um, as they grow so that is the foundation of our TK program um, as we look through the night we um, also have our um, our SEEP organization that's going to be speaking in just a minute. We have Karen here who's going to share a little bit about the Cupertino um, Educational Endowment Foundation. We have our, um, we're going to look at what ages are eligible for TK and what years, where our sites are, what our program looks like. We'll go through curriculum and um, and understanding really what TK is the importance of coming to school every day and looking at kind of what does the day look like for a child? What's the schedule? What are the different content areas? Um, what about if your child is learning English? How does how does Michelle, I, I think you muted yourself. I think I did mute myself. I apologize. I don't know when I muted. <laughs> But somehow I did. Um, so here is our agenda for the night in case you've missed any of that. So we'll we'll kind of start off. Um, um, I, it, I'm not sure I, where I went blank, but we'll go through um, introducing you to um, SEAF and then going through to learn more about our individual um, our, our TK program attendance, what happens in the classroom what is what content is there um, what is the schedule like what to, what can you expect in school in a TK room so um, let's see first up <clears throat> let me let's see first up is Karen here from CEF let's see and if Karen isn't here yet we will um, Put her in when she arrives so i don't see karen yet okay so we're going to go ahead and um and get started and when karen comes we'll be excited to to talk to her as well learn more about CEF. so um there's our CEF slide so as we go into tk tk started many many years ago so I would say probably about 10 plus years ago was the first TK rollout in California. And the intent with TK was to get those children that were right on the border of being, you know, eligible for kindergarten to be able to start getting them into the elementary school setting um, and provide earlier um, learning for our youngest students. In 2021, 2022, they uh, or 2022, 2023, they started expanding those dates of eligibility for TK. So in 21, 22, TK was offered to all children who were turning five between September 2nd and December 2nd of that school year. Each year since then, 
it's been expanding by two months to slowly grow out the program to include more and more students. Beginning for next school year, all students who turn five between September 2nd and June 2nd um, are eligible for TK. The dates are not flexible. They're actually very set dates. So if your child was born June 3rd, then they would not qualify. By the 25-26 school year, it expands to all children whose birthday occurs by September 1st. So that would include all four-year-olds. So um, we're not next a year after that. We have been growing over the years. So in 21-22, right before the expansion started, we had 11 TK classrooms at CUSD. Once we opened up those first dates to expand from December 2nd to February 2nd, we, were, we added five additional classrooms to 16. Um, last, this year we are at 23 classrooms and next year we're anticipating 27 classrooms. Um, we still have enrollment ongoing, so that number could shift just a little bit, but that's about where we're at right now. We have TK at all of our neighborhood schools and McAuliffe as well. Um, they are, we do not have TK at our, our excuse me, at our alternative schools, which are um, other alternative schools, which are CLIP, Korea, and Murdoch Portal. So those are the only three schools that do not have TK at this time. And um, I'm gonna say to Jamie and Helen, I can't see our um, notes. So when it's your when when you're ready to um, jump into your slide, just go ahead. <laughs> I can't see that part. I'm after the schedule, Michelle, and I'm first. Thank you. Thank you. So um, the TK program model that we have, the state has ratios that we must meet for our TK classrooms. So we must have a 12 to 1 ratio of adults to children. So um, in our classrooms, we have 24 up to 24 students maximum, and we have a teacher and an instructional assistant, and that um, provides us with a 12 to 1 ratio. We do follow our kindergarten instructional minutes, so the children are there for the same length of day as the kindergarten class itself. Um, and you know that those all of those parameters there are set by the state and um, that will be only subject to change by the state it is, it is written in the guidelines we have a variety of curriculum that we're currently using to support our um, you know our classrooms we have our literacy curriculum there math science there's a heavy focus in transitional kindergarten on social emotional learning. And when you think of social emotional learning in TK, we're thinking of a lot of things and, and we'll talk a little bit more as we go through it, but it's really helping children to, um, what we would say, regulate or co-regulate with us, their emotions and their feelings. Um, sometimes when we're young and sometimes even when we're older um, and we have big feelings, we're not sure what to do with those and how to manage those that are appropriate for the situation that we're in. And that doesn't come automatically for kids. Um, it's something that we help them with and we help them to learn. And in addition to that, we there's friendships. So we're help, helping them to negotiate making new friends, into sitting in a group setting, um, how to work in groups or alongside a lot of other children. So there's a lot of focus on really making sure that our TK students feel very comfortable at school, comfortable in the classroom, and know that they have trusted adults to help them in those tricky situations. Um, and then, of course, there we have um, support built in every single day for students who are learning English as well. TK um, really is a year and a time where we're just meeting children right where they are when they walk in the door. 
a lot of times parents wonder, well, do they need to know their alphabet first? Or how many numbers, how high should they be able to count? And a lot of those questions, what, what skills should they bring in the door? While it's always so wonderful when children have had experiences like reading books with you at home, maybe sitting on your lap in the evening and having books and um, being familiar, all of those wonderful things that you do as families together are fantastic. But however your child walks into the classroom, we are thrilled that they're there exactly how they are and who they are. So that's part of our TK. We focus on the whole child. So that means we're looking at all areas. We have the academics, of course, that we're going to make sure we're embedding in an appropriate way for young children. But we're also making sure to develop their physical development, their social, emotional development, um, all of those other pieces um, that are who they are. And we want to address all of those in the classroom. Our program is very hands on. We do um, incorporate learning through play into our day and making sure that children really are able to experience their learning um, and not just be receiving. We want them to be active in their learning. So you'll see a lot of exploration, um, a lot of hands-on learning. As I said before, we are really working on social emotional development, very big piece of TK and really getting those foundational skills set. So when you think of the concepts of math, so new, uh, number sense, things like that, those real foundational blocks of the content areas, those are the kinds of things that we're building through the, the foundational skills in literacy and math and other areas. And then school readiness. And what do we mean by school readiness? Kind of how I started this slide, which is, we, you know, or started this talk about SEL, we're really wanting them to know how to be in a school setting. How do I interact? How do I ask questions when I don't know? Is it okay to raise my hand? Is it okay to ask my teacher? How do I solve all of those things? So we really want to help them to develop those skills as a, a new student in elementary school. So one thing that's very important is attendance. So we want to make sure that you have some information about attendance. And um, here's just a few facts about attendance. There's a website called Attendance Works, and they have on the website some information for families. So if you're interested, you're more than welcome um, to check out that website. They have a, um, great information on there. But the more children miss of school, whether it's you know regularly coming late or missing a lot of days, they start missing pieces of information and it it adds up over time so as they're you know advancing up and learning new skills it's a little bit more difficult for them when when thing when the children are um, missing those things along the way so um, one of the things you want to do is really just make sure and i'll kind of go to the next slide here is set those regular routines of bedtime and morning routines to you know create that nice schedule for the children so they know what to expect, um, making sure things are out the night before, they know what they're going to wear. Uh, I know as my, my children are now much older, my children are in their 20s, so it's been a minute since my children were four years old at, at this age group. But I remember very vividly how mornings can go with young children. And sometimes even the clothes can be the hurdle in the morning that you're trying to get over. Maybe it's breakfast. So. Um, as regular of a routine you can make is really a great idea. And, um, you know, you'll have back to school night possibilities coming up once the school year starts. And, um, you know, we look forward to, to meeting you there. But other things that you can find on here as far as making medical appointments, maybe outside of the school day if possible. Um, and visiting the school site in the summer, in the evening, maybe you take a family walk, maybe you walk down and start letting them get to know the school a little bit too. Um, all of those things help them feel comfortable to want to come and make the morning a little more, a little easier going. Um, we are going to move into a day in the life of a TK student. <laughs> so we'll start getting into the classroom um, now. And I am going to start 
by showing a video right here. So let me, hopefully this works. I'm clicking on here. It's not clicking. Oh, it's, I know why it's not clicking. Hold on. Ah, it's not sounding either. Can you see it? You can see it, but we just can see it. yeah, yeah, we can, we can see, see it. but we are not able to hear. Oh yeah. boy. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep it running so you can at least see it, and then I'll work on why there is. No, no this is Jamie. I think I know why you're on two devices. Yes, or two. I'm on, I'm on one device. Double check your muting that nothing else is muting on your settings because I think that's it. When I'm hovering over. It says it's muted. Oh, okay. Can, I can't. Can you, I can't unmute you for some reason. Maybe you need to un. You need to check the settings of the mm -hmm. video too. Yes. Uh, when you're sharing your uh, screen, there's a choice to share with audio. Oh, so thank maybe... you. Can you restart it? <laughs> yes, thank you for all of your help and advice on that. That totally works. So I'm going to do it one more time. <laughs> Okay, so you can see in in that um, video from Ms. Dugan's class that there it's very multi-sensory. You see kids up, they're moving, they're active, they're singing, they're using hand gestures all while they're practicing learning their letters and letter sounds. So this is something that you would, would be very common to see in a TK classroom is using all of those um, different modalities of learning to help really um, solidify whatever um, that skill is the teacher's working on with the class. So, okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide here. There we go. So at this point here, I am going to pass it over to uh, Mrs. Jamie Dugan, who will continue on. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Jamie Dugan. I'm a TK teacher at Nimitz Elementary School. Um, this is my 10th year teaching TK. Um, here you will see, I'm excited to be with you tonight and thank you for joining. Um, and I'm excited to work with your incoming students next year or children, my incoming students possibly next year and your students or your children, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, here is an example of um, a schedule that you might find at your child's school site. Um, each site varies, but in general, we are all focusing on some of the same concepts or content areas as a district. Um, but the daily schedule might, again, vary by site to site or day to day even, depending on specials like library, art, or music, or if there's a field trip or an assembly. But typically, we have a time for literacy, language arts, um, EL ELD, which is oral language development, language learners, mathematics and other contents areas like science and social studies, um, SEL, which is our social emotional learning curriculum that we also place a heavy emphasis on, as Michelle mentioned at the start of the meeting. Um, and then we have time for workshops where it's small groups differentiated where they can work on skills such as fine motor skills, building those finger muscles, making them stronger, or some of reinforcing the skills for some of the content areas. And then, of course, there's time for play, um, whether it's recess lunch or um, 
choice time where they can explore different areas of the room, such as dramatic play, blocks, um, water tables, sensory areas, and things like that. So again, um, just to place um, more emphasis on the social emotional learning, um, that is a core component of our TK program. And something that I think makes us special and unique is that we take the learning foundations of the social emotional learning um, and the preschool foundations and then expose children to the kindergarten, some of the kindergarten standards, but we're really laying that foundation with the social emotional learning to get them ready, not only for academics, but for success as a learner, whether it's school readiness skills, being able to wait your turn, being able to share, being able to express your feelings and have some conflict resolution strategies um, and learning to self-regulate their emotions and their bodies and their feelings and having names for them and tools and skills and strategies to help them navigate through those big feelings as Michelle mentioned earlier. Um, and it's one of my favorite parts of the day where we can do a small group lesson and then do some modeling and role playing. And then throughout the week, we're constantly referring to the skills and tools and then putting them in action when needed. And then um, we do have an academic po uh, component to our TK program, um, and we're starting to get them ready for reading and writing in kindergarten. Not to say that students aren't already coming in with those skills or that we're not considering ourselves as readers or writers in TK, but it's just to really build that confidence um, in themselves as readers and writers, being able to recognize you know, letters and beginning sounds or being able to handle a book and know that print holds meaning um, and understanding some concepts, some early conventions of reading and writing to, again, build those skills and confidence now in TK to set that foundation for next year in kindergarten or for the following year in kindergarten, sorry. <laughs> And then for students who um, whose primary language is not English in the home, they would be identified as an English language learner uh, through the district. This would be on the uh, registration form when you first register your children for TK. If you marked that they speak um, a language other than English and noted a primary language, they would be considered an English language learner. And what that means is that your child would receive the LPAC exam, which is um, a state a state, um, a state assessment that assesses your child's English proficiency on the levels of listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And as a TK student, they would be assessed twice, once at the beginning, uh, start of the school year, that's the initial assessment. And then at near the end of the school year, this actually this time right now in the spring, which is their summative. And then based on those results, we know which level of proficiency they're at. And then that helps inform and guide um, a teacher's instruction for them, whether it's in small group, whole class, individual, um, to get them their um, language skills um, and development uh, growing and increasing. And then we also have a program that we use in our district called Imagine Learning, which is a um, district uh, purchased app that also helps um, build their skills and language development um, here at school. And then I will now pass on to my partner and colleague, um, Mrs. Helen Marquedos. Hello everyone, I'm Helen Marquedos. I'm a transitional kindergarten teacher at Nimitz Elementary School, and I'm excited to meet all the incoming TK families and students. So welcome everyone. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about mathematics. So our young TK learners, they engage in mathematical practices every day. What it might look like in a TK classroom, it could look like building blocks, playing a game, dancing and singing while counting. Because math is fun and TK is fun, um, the lessons are fun and engaging as well. Some of the big concepts students will learn this year or their TK year will be the learning to, they'll learn to identify colors and shapes, numbers from zero to, to 10. Students will also be um, identifying numbers and counting from zero to 10 and then counting from 20. Students will also um, uh, get to explore simple addition and subtractions with games and fun activities. They'll sort objects and students will be able to identify, repeat, and create simple patterns. So math is a really a fun time for students. It's usually hands-on and engaging in big group and small group activities. 
Next slide, please. Our young scientists are encouraged to explore, ask questions, and really learn about the world around them. Science is taught usually as part of our big the thematic units. I love these photos here down below. You see a student cooking, and this is a photo of a student who is uh, working on a project after a unit all about apples. She's making applesauce in Mrs. Dugan's classroom. So a lot of science is hand on, hands on. It's experiments, hands on investigation. It's in small groups. Um, the photo on top, students participated in a unit where they learned about the life cycle of a plant. They labeled a plant. They learned about the sun. So it's really kind of based on student interest and the questions they ask. Science is fun. In social studies, students really learn their role within communities, their school, how to be a good citizen at school, how to make good choices. Um, they learn about family. Students also learn about traditions and holidays and celebrations. So they learn about their place in a school setting and it's fun as well. Next slide, slide please. Uh, physical education and movement. So as we know, four and five-year-olds, they need to move and shake and wiggle. So every day, students will engage in physical activity. Um, this happens inside the classroom and also outside. Inside the classroom, students may be doing yoga or stretching or dancing to a song. And then outside is a time where their large muscles or their gross motor development happens. Students learn about hopping and galloping, running and walking. This is also a time where students enhance their balance and flexibility. Students learn appropriate ball skills, maybe some hopping, catching, rolling. And then another fun part of PE is they learn games. And within these fun PE games, they learn about cooperation and following directions. And what's really important, good sportsmanship. So PE and movement is something we do every day with our PE, with our uh, TK students. And then uh, workshops is really another name for small group work. Most days, students will work in small groups. And the purpose of small group work is to um, have them work with their peers for problem solving and uh, to work cooperatively, share materials, to practice fine motor skills. This is also a time students work with a teacher for a sustained amount of time to build focus and concentration. This is when a teacher might conduct a science experiment with a small group and another student might be working fine motor, motor cutting and another group they're doing math, building blocks. So it's just a rotation of small groups to enhance and to practice skills learned during whole class lessons. And this is for Mrs. Dugan. Thank you, Mrs. Marquetos. Um, so I wanted to touch upon music and art. So we all know that the arts, um, especially being introduced early on, are very beneficial for um, children and adults alike. Um, the arts are very important and we're so happy and fortunate that we get to have music and art at our school sites um, for our TK students as well. Um, and each music program and art program might vary a little bit site by site, but in general, students are gonna be participating in music and art activities, whether it's in the classroom or outside of the classroom with a music or art teacher um, for, the for most of the duration of the school year. And during music and art lessons, their um, skills they're learning and building on are such as fine motor, um, being able to listen and follow directions, encouraging their confidence and skills and abilities, um, being able to explore different arts and art mediums and be able to be creative and express themselves through the arts and music. And then as well as starting to learn some vocabulary that's related to art and music as well. Um, and it's one of my favorite times of day um, when we go to art and music and then as well getting to do art and music with my students. I'm not the best artist or singer, but I let them know that that's okay, that we can make mistakes and learn from them and just try and have fun and turn those mistakes into something else and nobody will ever know otherwise. So um, we, I really enjoy music and art. And again, I'm so we're so fortunate here in Cupertino that from parents like you, we get the funding to be able to do that for all of our students. And I think, Michelle, this goes back to you. So I'm gonna pass it back to Mrs. Heritage. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. So uh, 
getting ready. What are you going to do to get to get ready for that first day of school? Um, one of the things you can do is go visit the school site, take a look, take a walk around, um, become familiar. Where's the playground? Where are the classrooms? Those types of things. It always feels good to have a little bit of um, comfort level with your school site before you get there. Um, any chances that you have to do socializing over the summer, play dates, um, opportunities to meet up to do things together. You may have some neighbors um, that have children of the same age. A great, a great thing to do to get ready for a classroom setting. Um, eating independently. So what that, what we mean by that is, oftentimes children um, either come to school with packages or containers, or they may be. Um, choosing to have a school lunch that has little packets to open. So anything that you can do to help them learn those skills, of course the adults are always there to help them, but it, it helps the child to feel um, even more confident when they can get those things started on their own. So those are some great things to be practicing ahead of time. Um, the restroom. So there, those zippers and buttons can be awfully tricky um, when you have little hands that aren't used to using them all the time in that way. So think about the clothing um, that sometimes prohibits them from being able to use the bathroom on time. That's sometimes how accidents happen if they can't work their buttons quite right. So um, as much as you can do to help prepare them in that way would be wonderful. Um, making sure their backpacks have what they need, um, ready to go. Again, any buttoning, zipping of pants and jackets. It's always fun to be able to practice writing their name, even if that's the first letter um, or if it's the first and last name. Everybody comes in, in at a, um, a different place, but that's a fun thing for kids to practice on their way into TK. Um, and then there's so many things that you can do at home to give them skill practice. So when you're having dinner, having the children count how many uh, people will be attending dinner that evening and counting out the appropriate number of forks, knives, um, whatever utensils that you that you use in your home. Um, maybe they help you with laundry and you do some sorting. So when you think of math skills, Sorting is a very important math skill that we practice in TK and kindergarten. You can be practicing that at home by sorting out socks while you're doing laundry, matching pairs, things like that. All of those are great um, practice skills for them. Um, of course, always reading your favorite books. You can't get enough of that. The more reading you do, the better. It's a bonding experience for you and your child and a great way to get them um, excited about reading and to learn those reading skills where you're going side to side, up and down, left to right, all of those things. Um, and I do wanna say, please also read um, in your home language, whatever your language is. So. All, any and all reading is wonderful and um, so, so good for kids. Um, and then of course, taking walks together. So what do you, you can play I Spy games when you're outside using color, shapes, um, maybe objects that are a certain type of object, maybe identifying a certain kind of plant. So all of those things are skills that will complement what's gonna be happening when they get to TK. Jamie? Yep, that's back to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for waking me up. I'm just going to, I'm awake, everyone. Um, so I wanted to just go over um, kind of what to expect at school. So we've talked about what to expect for a TK student and TK, our TK program here in CUSD. Um, but kind of want to talk about what to expect at a school. Now, again, this might vary site by site. Things might be slightly different and you will receive more depth information about your child's school site um, shortly after school begins at back to school night from their classroom teacher and the school, as well as some information from the district will be sent out early on as well. Um, but you will find out things like drop off and pickup procedures. Um, certain schools, you know, have certain 
lists set in place for how to drop off and pick up children, as well as the classroom teacher might have different routines for that. Some of this information you can also find on your child's um, assigned school website. So I would encourage you to also go and explore that. If you are unsure where your child is assigned right now, maybe the school, their neighborhood site, if you're waiting, um, like a parent had mentioned at the start of the meeting, if you're waiting to hear back which site they will be assigned if you applied elsewhere, I would encourage you to kind of poke around between now and summer, just kind of go on the different sites and explore things like the bell schedule or the website or the PTA or PTO organizations and what information is already there would be a good place to start prior to that first day of school. Um, you will receive communication from the district, um, the school, and the classroom teacher. And our main um, communication platform or tool right now that we are using is called Parent Square. This is a uh, back and forth communication tool between um, yourselves and the school, whether it's the district, the school site, classroom teacher. And what's really great about Parent Square is it also translates in different so if you feel more comfortable communicating or receiving messages in your primary language, it has that capability and feature where it can translate back and forth. So communication is always there and clear um, with the feature of the program. Um, you'll find out things, you know, like the daily school schedule, again, the bell schedule, or you saw the sample schedule for what a day might look like for a TK student. Uh, we do have recess and lunch at all school sites. We do have a start and end time. Uh, Tuesdays are our early release date um, school-wide or district-wide, I should say. So that's something to anticipate and, and um, think about and plan for. We call it Tricky Tuesdays sometimes because it's an early out day and getting here on time and with traffic. And maybe if you have multiple children you're picking up, um, just being aware of that. Um, snacks and lunch, we do have, again, recess and lunch time. You are welcome to send food from home or we do have food offered um, at the school sites, at the cafeterias. Currently, we are still, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, but it's my understanding we, the state and the, um, is still serving free lunch to all students. Um, and we offer that for both recess and lunch. So snack and lunchtime, we have free meals for all district wide. Um, so that will be an option. And those men daily menus you can find on our district site under the nutrition section or and or on the school site as well. So again, you can start kind of poking around and seeing what kind of things does your child like or not like, what days would be good to send food from home or school. Um, and again, this is totally optional and up to you and your family. Um, Back to school night, as mentioned several times, happens usually after within that first week to two weeks of school. So we typically start school our first days on a Thursday. That following week sometime, if not the week after, we would ho host something called a back to school night at your child's school with the classroom teacher. It's an adult only evening to talk about um, curriculum, classroom, uh, routines and procedures, all of the nuts and bolts for the school year. Um, and then later on in the spring, typically we have open house. Some parents mentioned they attended um, their children's open house for older siblings tonight. I was one of those parents that went from there to here. So I was at my children's open house tonight. That's something that happens typically in the spring and that's for all families, parents and children. Um, so back to school night is different. It's a parent information night only, kind of similar to this, but really specific to the your child's classroom and classroom teacher and the, the school site that your child will be at. Um, some ways that you can get involved is joining organizations like the PTAs or PTOs that we have at the different school sites. Uh, Michelle mentioned at the beginning our CIF um, Endowment, uh, Cupertino Educational Endowment Foundation. Did I get it right? <laughs> Um, and that's another way that you can help donate and participate for our schools and our district. Um, and then there will be opportunities for you to volunteer at the school sites, as well as possibly in your children's classroom um, as well. We went on a field trip today and we love parent volunteers to come with us on field trips to help in the class. If you're not able to help in the classroom, teachers find creative ways for you to help outside of the classroom as well. So just ask, again, back to school night, your child's teacher, that would be the best person to um, have those inquiries uh, go to. Um, but I think I got everything. And if I missed anything or missed did anything, Mrs. Her Dr. Heritage, please let me know. And Mrs. Marquitos too, because <laughs> I'm starting to shut down. <laughs>
Yes, yes. I, do. I would add that um, this slide deck will be on the website when the video comes. And there's a link, you see CUSD nutrition menu that Ms. Dugan mentioned. Um, they'll actually email you monthly the calendar for, for, for nutrition for the next month. It shows right up in your email box. So once you go in there once, it'll get you'll have it for the rest of the year. I do it too. It's really wonderful. So just, just a side note on that one. Okay. Um, we do have, we, we get questions sometimes about, can you um, promote it from TK into first grade or um, can you skip into kindergarten early or, you know, what is the retention policy? So where TK fits in the scheme of this is TK is a two-year, or kindergarten, TK is year one of a two-year kindergarten program. So we do not promote from TK into first grade. So um, we have on the bottom here our um, district AR, which is attend acceleration and retention isn't an option in TK. Once you get into kindergarten, um, if there is a need for something like that, you would address that with the kindergarten teacher the following year. Um, so Mrs. Marquitos and Mrs. Dugan and I, um, want you to know that TK is really, really excited and really ready for you. And we want you to know that the children also feel the same way. So this right here is a little peek into Mrs. Dugan's class and they want you to know how excited they are about TK. And... Uh oh, the volume again. <laughs> it's not the same without the music. <laughs> They're still cute, though. <laughs> well, that that must be because um, I ha had to go off into another screen. So uh, let me put this back up. It went to another tab is I guess what I'm trying to say. So we missed the music, but let me tell you, it was very exciting music. <laughs> and the children were very excited dancing to show you um, their excitement about TK. <laughs> TK is the place to be. It's always a party every day. That's right. It is the place to be. Um, and we have, uh, sometimes parents are trying to find, where's the TK um, website? So I wanted to take a minute to show you where the TK website is. So um, I'm going to jump over to this tab and hopefully everyone can see the, the tab here. When you get onto the CUSD website, you I'm going to hover over departments. You're going to see something called teaching and learning. And when you get into the teaching and learning area, you'll see a quick link right over to transitional kindergarten that takes you right in there. You'll find a lot of other things on there as well, but we're gonna focus just on the TK website. So as you go into here, you'll see those um, date age date ranges that I told you about earlier. So you can see where, um, you know, when your child qualifies. I'm assuming most of you have children <laughs> in that age range of birthdays between September 2nd and June 2nd as you're getting ready to, or are enrolled for next year. Um, you have my contact right here. When you click on that, that'll take you right to my email. So please feel free to reach out anytime you have a question. And as you go down a little bit lower, you'll see three different um, tabs here. The first one shows you a little bit about the benefits of TK and talks to you about that. The second tab is our parent night tab. You'll see that this year we've had um, three parent nights scheduled plus this orientation that you're at today or to this evening. We have one more coming up on May 22nd. Next year's dates will be listed in um, uh, leading into the start of the year. So sometime in August, we'll have the dates up for the TK Parent Nights for next year. So these TK Parent Nights are a chance for all parents that are current that have current TK students to come together and learn more about your child's development. We have um, oftentimes teachers who might be sharing information. We have guest speakers that come on and share information. 
Um, I'm always open and welcoming of any suggestions that you might have, but you'll see um, the parent nights lined up for next year. Underneath there, as you keep scrolling, here's an example of a previous parent night, um, a previous parent orientation. Oh, that one doesn't exist. It looks like we've got to fix that one up, but we have a new one from tonight to add in. Um, so we will be adding new videos um, as we record these sessions. Next to that are frequently asked questions. So these have come from a lot of the comments that we um, see in the chat. And we are gonna be taking the comments from tonight and any questions and wonderings that, that you've had. And if it's not already on our frequently asked questions, we'll keep adding to this. So as you um, are done this evening and you get to thinking about school as you go through the rest of the summer and leading up into August, and you might wonder, I, I kind of, I don't remember this part, or I, I didn't think to ask that. I recommend you go to this frequently asked questions um, section here and a lot of the information that you're looking for could very well be right here on this website or this tab on this website. You'll see a link to the student assignment web page. So those of you who still have questions about which school did, was my child admitted into or how do I open enroll to a different school, any of those questions, you go to student assignment and they handle all the enrollment questions and registration questions. Um, the open enrollment is basically where you, let's say you live in one school's neighborhood, but the other school is closer to your work or something like that, and you would want your child to attend there um, or closer to an after school care. There is a way to apply to open enroll to that other site. Um, there's not always availability, but there is a process for you to be able to apply to do that. It's all through student assignment. Um, so um, all of these questions here, how long is the day? Is there an orientation? Why, yes, we're here doing it now. Um, and then after school care providers. So you'll see here, there is um, a link to all of our after school care providers at our different sites. We occasionally have a change at a school site, but um, typically it's that, you know, that we have the same um, providers. We occasionally add one or subtract one, but we always are, have at least one um, at every school site. And then some students qualify for our ELOP program. If your child qualifies for ELOP, it's a state-run program. Um, you are contacted through um, Mr. Derek Jackson, who runs the ELOP program for our, di our district, um, letting you know that you qualify for the ELOP program. Um, it is an after-school care program also. Um, so those are the different bits of information here on the website. And um, let's see if I can go back to share this tab. Ha, I did it, okay. <laughs> I didn't disconnect it. So I hope that helps you to know where you can look for a little bit of information um, as you have additional questions that come to you. Again, I will take a lot of the questions that you've put in the chat tonight and add those to our FAQ tab. Um, if you have the question, I'm certain that many other parents do too. So I really am grateful that you're putting those questions in chat for us to be able to help more parents. And a big shout out to Mrs. Tammy Fox. She's another TK teacher in our district at Lincoln. She has been a rock star knocking out those answers to your questions. So big kudos and shout out to Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Yes, thank you so much, Tammy. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Very great. Um, here is another information page for you. So if you have questions about enrollment, you see the student assignment um, link. And again, this um, presentation will be linked onto the website so that you'll be able to click these links within about a week to two weeks of time. It could be sooner, but I don't wanna promise it sooner, just in case. Um, if you have any questions about your school site, please do contact your school principal. They're always more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, we have Megan Bussell, who's able to answer, answer questions about any health plans your child may have. Um, and then, of course, you can contact me with any questions regarding program, curriculum, and those types of things. Um, I don't have direct information about enrollment, so you definitely want to go to student assignment for that piece. Um, we also have some parent resources for you. 
There is a TK website that offers a lot of information for parents. So feel free to check out that link. It's very rich in resources. Um, there's also a, an organization that's a statewide organization called First Five California. We have a local branch for Santa Clara County. Um, this link will take you to um, a website showing you how to prepare for TK. And then of course we have our website um, linked as well. And this link takes you directly to the TK page so that you, when you click on it, you don't have to you know, find your way through <laughs> to get down to it. So those are the different resources. Um, again, we're, we have a couple of ways to be able to answer some questions. We, we do end at 7.30. We knew this was gonna go kind of right up to the wire and we probably wouldn't have um, a time for in-person questions, but um, I wanted to let you know that we are going to, again, take your, we have all the questions that um, Mrs. Fox has been answering and, and others um, have been answering in chat. So we'll be able to make a, consolidate that, put that on the frequently asked questions page. And I believe it was Mrs. Jugan was talking about back to school night and um, that is a wonderful place to ask those real specific questions about your your child's, um, you know, specifically about your child's classroom and school site questions. So oftentimes there might be questions about what time school starts or, um, you know, should I bring anything extra? What should go in the backpack? All those kind of things. Those are, those are great um, school questions and they'll be able to answer those things for you. Uh, we want to see if the SEEF person ever joined to do that part of the presentation uh, and with that, or are we going to? Yeah, let's see. Um, and I can't tell by um, my screen. Is SEEF here with us tonight? Okay, so I'll just kind of um, let's see if I can take you back to that slide here. We're going to go back to the SEEF slide. Now, what I want to say about SEEF is that CIF, um is so incredibly supportive of our programs at school. Um, there are ways you can donate to CIF. I would always look for anything that they may put out. They have um, contributed. I wish I had the, the amount, but it's an enormous, um, enormous amount to individual teachers who request things for their classrooms, to school sites, to, um, and, and it's all specifically for the benefit of students. They're an incredibly wonderful foundation um, and Cupertino is in, district is incredibly grateful for all of their support. One of the things that they support, and I'll tell, I'll give you a sneak peek, um, you will, you're, you'll be receiving a gift from CUSD as your child enters into TK. So um, sometime in that first month of school, um, we have what's called a tinker box. And um, it's an exciting um, little bit of material that helps your child get started off into TK. Um, I won't give it all away, so it'll be a surprise when you start the next year, but I do wanna mention that is supported through CEF. So um, we're very grateful and um, I wanted to just express my thanks to all of you for taking the time this evening to come out with us. We're so grateful to have all of you here tonight. This video will be posted online with the slide presentation so that you have access to all of those hot links in there. I also wanted to do a huge thank you to all of the people who helped me know how to turn the audio on. <laughs> thank you very much. I learned something new tonight. and. Um, you know, we're, we are so excited to meet all of you, or if we know you from, um, you know, you've been in the district and you have older children, we're excited to see you again as you enter a new um, child from your family into the TK program. So thank you to all of you so much, and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you again to Ms. Dugan, Mrs. Fox, Mrs. Marquitos for all of your tonight um, and for sharing with the parents. So. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.